Hey, I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Give this video a like. Check out the podcast below in the description. Uh, we were streaming during the fourth quarter of Monday Night Football. The game looked tight. Raiders took over. My, I walked away from that game kind of thinking, this is the John Gruden offensive output two weeks now in a row, and particularly at home against the Saints, is a different animal than playing Carolina. That felt like the John Gruden team we'd been I'd been waiting. I think we'd all have been kind of waiting for. I, maybe it's here, John. Maybe it's here. They look good, guy, and they looked really good on offense. We talked about it on the stream. They have a star tight end. Waller is a star. You know, I mean, there's just no way around it. I mean, he's a he's an excellent elite difference making mismatch, right? It's just going to be hard. How many teams are going to have a guy that go? We feel we can cover Waller. Less than five. I mean, not many. There's just not going to be many, and no, you could I, argue no one truly does. I'm just thinking about it. Like, who feels who would feel good about it? Well, Jamal Adams can't cover him, right? How many greats? There aren't that many great cover safeties in the league. Maybe Eddie Jackson, the Bears, is probably the best cover safety. There just aren't many. Not many linebackers can really run with them. Can the Chiefs cover him? Yeah, I mean Honey Badger, but he's way taller than Honey I know. Badger. I, what I think they would, I, what I think a good defense would try to do is wherever he lines up, I'm putting a linebacker over him. I'm fucking jolting him at the line, and then my safety's coming over the top. So I'm I'm rerouting him. This is something I learned in Philly. I like this. Use your fists. Not a lot of people do this. Well, it's just the reroute at the line of scrimmage. I'm just, I'm hit, because you can hit him at the line of scrimmage. You have to reroute him. And once I reroute him, it throws him off. If you just give him a free release, he's a thoroughbred, right? And so many guys give tight ends free releases. Well, George Kittle, Kelsey, Waller, all these guys, Jordan Reed types, they, they run like wide receivers. So you're just good luck because the linebackers and the safeties are flat-footed or the safeties are way behind them. You got to reroute them. And then just hopefully you got to cover safety. Josh Jacobs, I don't care what his box score looks like, is a fucking monster. Well, can I right? interrupt you on that? <laughs> I do yeah. care because to me what's cool about him is that his box score is missed. His box score – to me, what's interesting about him is that his box score does not tell the story. I don't even. Sometimes know. it does. Right? Well, yeah, Some sometimes it does. it does. But like yesterday was Monday was was an example of throw the box score out the window. Well, and probably I bet if we really like went back and tallied it, he had a couple where the dudes missed and the D linemen are just lighting him up five yards behind the line of scrimmage. That happened twice. This thing off the top of my head. So it's like he probably had eighty five. He had better box score. He had a more productive for 88. game. Yeah, to me, he had it felt more like 27 for 110. Like if it you just did, said, "What do just, you think he did?" He had 27 carries. I've been like 27, 120. But you, you feel know what? Him. Not he every you feel him. Yeah, you feel him, and not every sometimes yard is created yards. equal. Yeah, right. To, like sometimes it's you need two yards here, get two yards. Like it felt like whenever he had to get a yard, he got a yard. And they, well, and for, they exa for example. Alvin Kamara, right? You're terrified of him. Like, can't let him get in space. Can't let him get in space. We just got to corral him. Josh Jacobs probably has, has linebackers thinking like, God damn, I got to tackle this guy, right? <laughs> like, this guy's coming downhill. I'm not – I don't think linebackers are going like, God, Alvin Kamara's running at me. It's like, thank God he's running at me. Thank God he's not running to the left or right of me. So I got to chase him. Where I think Josh is one of those – I think Zeke is probably the king of this right now in the NFL. Like, holy shit, this guy's coming downhill. Right. Just I got to I got to tackle this tow truck. And and then you factor in Brian Edwards is the all rookie look team. And I think he's I texted with some people with the Raiders. He's they think he's really talented. He just gonna, they just got to get him the ball. Like, maybe because he wears 89 and that was James Jones's number. He looks like a 12 year vet. Yeah, he, he looks like he's been in the league 10 years and made four Pro Bowls. Right. And then you got Rugs who could just fly. And whether he's catching it or not, he's terrifying people because he's the fastest guy on the field. And then if Derek, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a quarterback league. Like, to me, we talk about all these pieces. Like, if you have a shitty quarterback, all that stuff's not going to matter as much. I thought Derek, I, I picked up some coffee this morning. And I flipped on, I just had Mad Dog Radio on, and Adam Shine had Rich Gannon on. And I thought Rich just opened it up. He's like, I think that's the best game Derek's played in a handful of years. When you just factor in start to finish, how well he played, given the opponent, given the pressure of it Monday night, just like that's a big boy max quarterback game. That's what his coach wants of him. That's what we've seen back in the peak of Derek. 
you could argue, given everything, it's the best game he's had since his MVP season. I, I, without thinking much about it, I would say, yeah. I thought what was big in that game was they're down 10 nothing. He gets sacked on back-to-back plays. And it's like, all right, like what, what are you guys going to do? Derek came out, I think, I don't remember exactly if it was after the miss to Ruggs. He had eight straight passes at one point. And I think after those back-to-back sacks, it kind of you. I'll tell you what was going through my mind was: is he spooked? Is he is he overhyped? What what is what's happening? Maybe there's a basic explanation. I know one of those plays you were telling me. He just said, "Oh, the receiver got bumped. I couldn't step into the throw, whatever." But he just started making it was decisions the, it was really the, it was that double move for Waller where the broadcast was kind of killing him. It was remember so that was the like, second you got to pull the trigger. I think that was the yeah. second sack, right? In back-to-back sacks, it was the third sack. He got sacked three times in their first two drives. It was like. What's going yeah, on? Gre- Gre- Greasy was like, pull the trigger. He's wide open. Well, he started, he completed eight straight balls. To me, when I watched the game back on Tuesday morning, he just started getting the ball out so fast. And I think this is where it's a credit to him and it's a credit to Gruden. When you look at the Raiders, I, I will box score scout for a second just because I remember all but one of these plays. Um, when you go through who we threw the ball to, okay, Waller had 12 catches, 103 yards. So like you said, this guy's a stud. One of the best players in the NFL. Hard to stop. Brian Edwards had two catches. I remember both of them. He looked sweet on both. One, he was coming wide open across the middle right. The other one was down the left side line. They were both big-time plays. What I'm getting at here is you don't have – you've got one guy with 12 catches, and then you if you didn't watch the game and just watch the box score, you'd be like, what are all these guys with one catch? Do these matter, or do they have nobody else who can step up? I would argue they had a bunch of guys step up. Hunter Renfro, three catches for 37 yards. Foster Morrow, I remember that play. It was a 31-yard – it was his only catch of the game. It was a 31-yard play down the right side. Nelson Aguilar's one catch. He looked like he was running a 4-3-40. How about the little move? He, like, keep, he put his hand in the ground. Like, it was sweet. Zay Jones, that one guy, catch. That guy, that guy in Philly, they ain't making fun of Nelson after catching no. that No. <laughs> Zay Jones, one catch was the touchdown before the half. I, I will admit, I don't remember Devontae Booker's catch for six yards. It was a swing route. It was just okay. like a dump off. I'm, Alex, guy, I'm a I'm a Devontae Booker stand from Utah. Well, I'm he got he just got buried on the depth chart at Denver. Uh, Alec Ingold, two catches. One of them was a sweet, wide open misdirection. Didn't see him come in touchdown catch. Jason Witten, one catch, three yards, but it was a first down. Remember, uh, Rugs, one catch for four yards, but he drew two pass interference plays and was open on the deep ball that Derek overthrew him. So, uh, like, twenty eight receptions spread out over a bunch of guys but to me that was not well they only have Waller and then I don't know how these other guys are going to fit like they found a way Derek and John they found a way to fit one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven guys into the game plan to catch balls and I'd say 10 of those guys that caught a ball made an impact I agree if this team's going to go to the playoffs, that was a long box we'll, score reading, but I had a point. Yeah, but I, I, I think over the next three weeks, if they win two of these next three games, I, I feel pretty confident they are a playoff team because they're playing the Patriots, the Bills, and the Chiefs. You win two of these next three games, you're four and one, with several wins over playoff teams, and, and these next three weeks would be AFC playoff teams, right? And I, I'm really talking more about the next. If they can win these next two games, I expect them to lose to the Chiefs. But if you can beat the Patriots and the Bills. Like, one of those two teams is a lock playoff team, and I think it's decent. It's fair to say one of those other teams is going to be a wild card, especially if Cam stays good and the Bills aren't going to go away. These next two weeks are huge. Now, you could argue somehow maybe you get some roll and maybe attempt to compete with the Chiefs, but I, I still think the Chiefs are just so much better. That it, it, it would be huge for the Raiders to make the playoffs. They have an offense that can make the playoffs, right? They have an yep. offense that should be, I think it's fair to say now, at the end of the season, compete to be a top five scoring offense. They should have 10 plus games where they score 30 plus points. They it's, already got two. It, the, the thing is, when you play the Chiefs, when you play the Bills, I don't expect you to score 35, right? But I still expect you, if you're a top five offense, you're still able to score 24, right? Right. And be, and be tied going into the fourth quarter. That's where a good offense, like a great offense, I bet if we you know, the best offenses of all time, they're going to have a couple games where they won it because that was the game their defense stepped up and they were able to get to 23 points and they won the game 23 to 20. So that's where, to me, the step is like, they can't have, if they're going to win 10 games, less of those like, God, 
They didn't fucking get it past midfield till the fourth quarter. Right. That should never happen with this team, right? No, no. Because they have so many options, and I think one thing Monday night proved, and maybe the Saints' defense is just, you know, maybe it's not good. But it is not good at this point. But they did okay last week against Brady. Um, But I, I think what, what kind of has me bullish on them, in addition to the scoring and how good Derek looked, was just the day – I think it's hard to find a way to work all these guys in, and they found a way to work them all in and make it feel balanced, not make it feel like they had to they had to get the ball to anybody other than Waller, and everyone knew they wanted to get the ball to him, and they did. So I'm with you. The next two weeks are big. That's To me, that's kind of saying, like, win one of the next two. I mean, if they were to w- beat New England, I wouldn't have to wait until Buffalo to say this should be a playoff team. I kind of feel like they yeah. should be a playoff team now. Just how many teams in the AFC, if we went through it, do you say, I feel like they do one thing really well? Because I watch this team, and I think they do one thing really well. I, they kept giving the ball to Josh Jacobs. You knew they're down 10 nothing. They got to throw the ball. They did. They did it successfully. You know if they get a lead. That was the other thing. They got a lead, and then Josh Jacobs can help you put them away. So, I mean, to me, I look at them right now going, I'm going to be disappointed after these first two weeks if this team doesn't make the playoffs. It's going to be a disappointment. Well, to me, when you say teams do one thing really well, I think the Chiefs for sure, the yep. Ravens for sure. Yep. I think the Steelers for sure, their defense is elite, right? Their yep. defense is dominant. Uh, so that's three teams. I think it's fair to say the Bills now have proven for several years their defense is really good. And then their offense is coming. But I don't, their offense doesn't define them, their defense does. And their physicality. So to me, the Bills, I think we're still determining what the Patriots are, but they get the benefit of the doubt. And if Cam's... Cam's healthy. He's a playoff guy. Bill's Bill. He's a Super Bowl guy. So you just combine the two. It's like healthy Cam, Bill. Like they're not gonna suck, right? So that's this game's big. I honestly just in the short in the micro view, this game's fucking fun. I, I I'm looking forward to this thing, right? Well, I, I'm yeah. looking much more forward to this game now, going into like over the last 48, 50 plus hours that we've seen Cam and then the Raiders than I would have been to start the season. Because I'd be like, eh, is Cam really healthy? Are the Raiders going to be that good? You know? Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. We, I mean, I think we get this game. I think we get a doubleheader in the Hell morning. Hell yeah, we do. Giant 49ers and the Raiders. I'm excited. 